Hey, Derek. Hey, Baxter. It's Derek, everyone, the guy behind the camera. I think this might be my first real time on the camera. Which I think is funny because you normally are with a computer in hands all the time, so we're just going to copy we're, that. We've spun the camera around because this is usually where I sit <laughs> and shout things over there to the right where the set is. If you're Anyway, Derek has found something that we like to call the Wayback Machine. So for those of you that don't know, there's this thing called the Internet Archive Wayback Machine. And I thought it would be cool to go back and take a look at what Fender, what Gibson, what PRS was doing and as part of a series. And so we're going to start today with the oldest archive that we can get from Fender back in 1997. I was like 15 years old at this time. I think I was like eight. So um, <laughs> just, just go with it, go with it. Um, so Fender is is here, 97, right? Are we, so we can go on this, we can see any other website pages, correct? Yeah, so we're gonna see what Fender was up to, what Fender thought was cool, how they were marketing, and sort of the beginning of the internet age, which I find extremely fascinating. It is fun, because we've already gone through some of this, and it's fun. Yeah. It's hilarious, and the things they tried. And just to give you an idea, like this is the year sort of like, Oasis is at sort of the peak of their stardom. Blur, um, Bittersweet Swim Symphonies on the charts. Um, P Diddy was one of the big hits of that year too. But then you also have Princess Die passes away. There's the avian bird flu. O.J. Simpson's found guilty, not of murder, but on the civil cases. Man, There's all sorts of fun stuff was happening this year. I mean, I got my computer here too. Oh, more importantly, Lion King the musical. Kun Matata. On, on, no worries, baby. Scotland referendum, Mars, Pathfinder lands. But again, the other most important that I'm going to stop, Harry Potter, first book releases. In Jeez. England. And that was known as the Philosopher's Stone. 25 years Harry Potter has been around. Jeez. Or since 1997. I can't do the math. Well, let's get at it. So if you go, you'll see my screenshot here. My screen grab um, is going to be up. And we're just going to follow us as we kind of explore the website. So what you're seeing right now is the Wayback Machine, um, archive.org. You can type in any website, and the internet basically takes snapshots of different websites all over the world and Fender. So we're going to jump to the Fender homepage here. And uh, Ooh, so <laughs> this, is, this is high tech. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll see it's <laughs> known as Fender World, which is... Uh, Interesting. Do you notice the um, the tone knobs up there? That's really that's a good good choice. Yeah, those are the uh, the six domains of Fender World, oh, which is uh, which is interesting. Okay, so clearly SRV is still kind of the king at this point. Johnny Lang is on the scene, um, and you've got the the Fender Hendrix experience. So uh, well, let's just jump. Let's just jump yeah, right to the there. gear and see what gear. Is uh is brand new for '97. Which is funny because like Steve Rivon's on the cover, but Steve Rivon died seven years prior. Yeah, well, he was he was still the, the hotness at that time. Yeah. All right, so these we've got our our standards. Let's just look at our favorite, the Strats. Let's see Give what the me. Strats were at the time. All right, so we've got Artist Signature, U.S. Vintage, U.S. Plus Deluxe, American Standards, Tech Mex. Collectible, standard, and traditional. So let's just look and see what the signature models were in 97. Richie Sambora. Yeah, Richie Sambora. Awesome. Obviously, you've got Clapton. Clapton's kind of like in the Fender heyday at this point. Yeah, because this is this is like post-Journeyman, but sort of in that 24 Nights period, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, I mean, you've got Buddy Guy, you got Bonnie Raitt's Strat. Uh, the Blackmore, I mean, Richie Blackmore, Richie Sambora had two. He had a standard and... 24 Nights is 1990 as well. My apologies. Way, way. Yeah, way off. I'm just, I'm off. You got the Helicasters, Jerry Donahue signature strat. Um, awesome. So you can go on here and you can actually see what all the specs were. Little pictures of them. I mean, it's, it's cool. You can see what colors they had. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Ooh. That is clever. All right. You want to take a look at another one? Let's see what the Bonnie Raitt one looked like. Yeah, let's see the Bonnie Raitt, because I don't think it's going to be the Relics one. I don't even think Relics were a thing. But they were, but just not within not within the um, non-custom shop. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. So you've got two. You've got two colors. 
All right, let's go back. Let's look at the uh, the U.S. Vintage. So what would that be comparable to now? Um, U.S. It was, vintage. It would be the American Original, which is now gone, but then maybe something else that's coming soon. Okay, so so this would be like the AVRI, the American Vintage Reissues? Yeah. So they had 57 Strat and a 62 Stratocaster. So it was very limited offerings. Yeah. <laughs> They, um, well, you got to remember back then, like Fender's just experiment. They're just like throwing darts at the board sometimes. And, like, let's see, like, let's just build this. So you get this, and the, this thing's sl sort of slow to load, but you've got three color sunburst. You got black, ocean turquoise, candy apple red, fiesta red, and vintage white. Well, so cool. we got some good colors. You know, it looks like the uh, the specs were were pretty similar to. Uh, to, to how they would have been in, in 50 are these uh are these nitro does it say i'm doubting that at this point now what i've found fascinating with the guitar companies as they've gone through and done these historic reissues they've gotten progressively much better as time's gone on because back in some of the 90s and early 2000s they're using the wrong wirings the wrong chemicals obviously the yeah. wrong paint colors and some of the entirely wrong pickups too so okay. it's, it's neat that like you can go back and see like gibson's custom shop is actually using the right wire for a historic guitar. So the American original is as close to the original specs as you can get. Which one? You're talking on about a No, I'm talking now. The, the American originals that have just been discontinued, they are the, the closest to the, the specs that you can get on a production model guitar without going custom okay. shop. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 Except okay. for maybe if there's something else coming soon. That's true. Maybe. Maybe an updated something or other. Okay. So you get the six, the sixty-two Strat, only available in three colors. All right, very cool. As that's all you need. Yeah. All right, let's look. So what's interesting? They did not have any Tellys at that time. For uh, we're just in the Strats right now. Oh, so why. yeah, yeah. Okay. The U.S. Plus Deluxe. So these are gonna be your, your like your uh, kind of like the the Ultra. So man, look how many different Strats they have at this time. And we always think. You know, man, Fender's got so many SKUs. It seems like they have even more SKUs back in 97 than we have today. I think that's that's been sort of Fender's, like, M.O. since they, they broke free from the, um, the heydays, and they just, like, lots of guitars. Yeah, well, clearly, the two new ones on this uh, in 97 were the, the Big Lone Apple Star. Strat and the Lone Star. What's the Big Apple Strat? I, I don't even remember. I remember the... Uh... All right, so... I know the Roadhouse and the Lone Stars got one of the hang on the wall over there. So this is going to be two Seymour Dungans. So this is a, a it hasn't loaded yet the picture and it might not because it's a double an archive, humbucker. but double humbuckers as all strats should be. So similar to what we see in some like the Player Pluses, doesn't that have a, a dual humbucker? There is one. I think we opted out of it. Okay. There's yeah. like the HSSs that we have, but some interesting colors. You know, you've got the Shoreline Gold. And that's the cool teal to have green metallic. gold in a production. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, now, what, all the greatest hits. Yeah, one, one thing that I don't see on here is they're not showing any prices, but so you got the Roadhouse. So three Texas Special pickups on this one. So pretty, pretty standard. So same thing as the other one, except it's got single coils instead of the two humbuckers. So same, same colors, Big color Apple schemes. Strat. I see some of the big Apple Strats on Reverb. Well, what are those selling for right now? I mean, I see some at like, God, here's one. Like, I see one at like 950 all the way up to like 2000 almost, just depending on color and whatnot. Damn. Yeah. So, yeah. So, they probably held their held their price. Here's going to be an interesting thing. When I was poking around earlier, we're going to go to the to the Fender like uh, clothing and accessories. Ooh. It's going to blow your mind how much they were charging for T-shirts and jackets back in 97. You're gonna be surprised. No, right. you've, got, you've got my interest peaked. All right, so here, here we've got the, uh, the US Strat Ultra. So this has got the old lace sensor pickups. So is this the uh, kind of the equivalent of our American Ultra? I'm, yeah, and I, and I have one of these old from the early 90s. Is it in here in the it's, room? It's in there over there. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so we, we'll, All right, we'll one. maybe we'll, we'll- It's we'll behind the two rock. Snag a picture of it. All right, so you could get them in four colors. They're heavy. Are they heavy? <laughs> yes, it's like a Les Paul in the All shape right. of a Strat. That so, sounds kind of like a Strat, but not totally. Deluxe Strat Plus. 
Hmm. Let's see what this is. Come on. That's when, like, is the Deluxe Strat Plus better or lesser than the Strat Ultra? I would say lesser. Is it lesser? But I'm just guessing. I don't know. I mean, this has got roller nuts, lace sensor pickups. Uh, so that's good that you can you're pulling them up on yours. I'm Gibson. trying to. Guys, is, is that the one that has like the electronics that would go in and out of it? Maybe no, that was later. I thought, but oh, I can't remember. All right, going back. Yeah, kind of cool though. All right, last but not least, let's let's check out the Lone Star Strat. You remember that one? Yeah, of course. That seems to be the one that sticks out in my mind. I don't know why, if that was just maybe the most popular at the time. It's because it's the only thing you could afford when you were 15. Probably. Because they're expensive. I had a West Tone Electra. That was my kind Ooh, of my first nice. guitar. Yep. All right, so getting out of the uh, out of those. Then we got the American Standard. This is probably the one that most everybody new well that's the that's one of their longest running sort of production line they had that run for i think almost 30 years or so and it, they didn't change the name and now it became the american professional and then the american professional too yeah that's what sort of took over the american standard and they were trying to delineate or separate from like the standard versus the american standard so people mm -hmm. stopped calling it the mexican interesting yeah um so we got some floyd roses on there we got the they had a left-handed what's the gr any ideas? The Roland, the Roland pickup. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, that took, took me a minute. Yeah, that, that was a. So you had a, a MIDI capable guitar, which yeah, you would you'd pair that up with uh, a synth. It was actually pretty usable if you were doing that type of yeah. work. You could have like the um, the owners of a lonely heart type sound. So do you remember? And I think we're gonna find it here on the website that uh, Fender had like a notation software to where you could use one of those those pickups and you could play and it would notate for you and you could That's learn songs awesome. and, and sort of score music. That I think it was awesome. like the V something. I don't know. I, I believe it's in here. But, uh, okay, so yeah, the, the Roland Ready. All right, so Radical they got the Tex-Mex. What's collectible? All right, let's go to the collectible. There's, that's a lot of different levels of Fender's in production model. We only really have, what, four now? Currently four, maybe five? Of what? Just within, like, the, the Fender production line. Uh, got the Ultras, Performers. Well, yeah, performers. You got, you got the Players, Player Pluses, the Pros, the Venteras. Yeah, I mean, there's, 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 so there's, there's just as many now, yeah, there's, okay. There's more than that, too. You got the, you know, you, then you got the spinoffs like Parallel Universes. And all that stuff that they okay. do. So they, it, they, I think Andy, their current CEO, likes lots of guitars. Okay, so fair he keeps, enough. He keeps throwing them at us. Okay, so we got the 50 Strats, and here is the first one under the collectibles. So why is it collectible? So they're saying that this is this replica is true in every detail. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. It's true every detail. Let's see. What, what's it called again? It's just called the 50 Stratocaster. Okay, keep going. I'm just looking up. So you got a 60 Strat. Let's click on these here. Have a shell pink, sonic blue, basswood body. Oh, those are made in Japan. Oh, That's okay. So that that is that is recycled every few. So a lot of this is the same guitars we're seeing now. That is funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that's the uh, that was the 60, 96, 97. Yeah, CIJ. It's and then like they the, got the the, the, six, the sixty eight. That's yeah. too funny. I see the stamps on them. Yeah, very cool. That is funny. Yeah. All right. Well, that that so pretty the, much. But then you get the the standard and then the traditionals. Let's just browse the standard real quick and then we'll move on. Okay. So yep. It is pretty funny. Now, did they get things? I want to get into this merch, and if there's anything that would be a little bit silly, too. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. All right. So, <laughs> I mean. We just started. Yeah, we just, the Robin Ford has his own sort of setup on here. Let's check out the Robin yeah, see Ford if, model. See if it's the same guitar that's out now. 
They still it's still in production. So some of these guitars, like the Clapton, the Ford, the Jeff Beck, the Eric Johnsons, they stay in production kind of indefinitely. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. So this is the Ford signature model. Ooh, it's different. Almost reminds me sort of like the uh, like a Yamaha or an Ibanez. Or an Echo Park. Or yeah, a little bit. Okay. I'll take it. Multi bound ebony fret boards. Let's see what the other one is. I thought we were going to see this Telecaster. Oh. No. Fascinating. Double cuts. It's a different take for Fender. I like it, Fender. Yeah. Getting off the off the beaten path. Who's Nuki Edwards? Wow. There's that some... was a limited edition. I wish I had the pictures. That's awesome. It's, the pictures might load here in a second. He was a Nashville artist. Performed and record for Buck Owens, Glenn Campbell. Interesting. See if you can I'll have to see if we can find one and pull it up. Found it. 1996. Looks like a set net maple. Looks like the made in Japan one. Yeah, it looks like ones that we yep. just saw ones like maybe just... two years ago. Too funny. Well, that's too funny, yeah. All right, let's see here. It's a bolt on, but it looked like a set and but it's just yes. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, the other other guitars, you know, you know, typical Jaguar, Jazzmaster, Mustangs, the Jagstang. I I think the Jagstang was might have been new in that time, but um, you know, they had all their other stuff, accessories, whatnot. So the G Vox was that that software that I was talking about. I remember that now. G I could never have that because that was something fancy. Oh, I thought I thought I was so cool with it. All right, so yeah, like ninety six would be the first year for the Jag stay. Okay, yeah, yeah so, so that's right when Kurt announced did design and, that with Fender. That's pretty wild. All right, so let's look at the. Um, let's see what was new. What was new? Like what were the the big press releases? <laughs> so the, the Roadhouse. I love the color scheme on this. Solid. Well, is that solid how work. the website looked. This is how the website would have looked in nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, it's not possible, really. It yeah. looks bad. It absolutely, you just forget. Yeah, so you have November Roadhouse Strats. Jammin', whatever that was. Okay, there's that GVOX software that I was talking about. Mm, I like that. I like that. That coffee board's really pretty. <laughs> I know, right? It was, oh, it was horrible. It was horrible, horrible oh. software. You've had... Uh, the Jags yeah, there's thing. the Jags thing yeah. release. They look like the things we have now. Yeah. It's shockingly similar. Man, all right, that's pretty cool. How about some, um, where's my merch? You want to see the merch? Oh, Fenderwear, yeah. as they called it. I just want to get a nice t-shirt or a jacket or a hoodie, maybe. Something BMJ. nice and cheap. BMJ, so that was the sort of the go-to people. Excitement. Excitement. Bounds. I want to know what you're going to get first, Baxter. You going to get a t-shirt? You want to see what the shirts were? Well, because I remember like a few years ago meeting with the, the guy in charge of Fender Apparel, Mike. He's like, everything is going to be 90s, but six months from now, it's over, so sell it all. Wow. Uh, this is probably two or three years ago. So, yes, yeah, so they had embroidered golf shirts. Awesome. $35. Okay. Not, not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but still not cheap. How much do you think the jackets are? $50. How much? Well, these are the schematic shirts. There's, there's quite a few shirts. We'll just jump to the jackets. Hundred dollars for oh, one of these jackets. Lord. Now maybe that was MSRP. Back when MSRP. Back was when a thing? MSRP was a thing. I don't know. That's a lot of money for a Fender jacket. Yeah. I bet it's not the finest in materials either. No. Well, their T-shirts were affordable. Sixteen bucks. Yeah, it's affordable-ish. We got sweats at a dollar if you're big. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't friendly to big boys. You can get your sweatshirt and oh my goodness, like that's so, this is it's some like solid it's, colors. I feel like this is so Tim Allen. <laughs> it really is. It's like home improvement. Tool time, one hundred percent. Yeah, like sweatshirts and everything. So speaking of that, what sports teams have things too, right? Like mascots. Yeah, mascots. I mean, what if Fender had a mascot? Well, they didn't introduce that mascot until uh, like two thousand. We'll get to that. So you have to stay tuned. Yeah, that's going to be in the next one. Well, I mean the next three or so. Next three. 
So what's cool about this is you can go back. So if you have a guitar that you bought and you've been digging around for the specs on it because you have some special model that Fender came out with in 2004 and you're trying to find the specs, definitely check out the Wayback Machine because you can just find the website and go through and you could probably get some accurate specs for your guitar. Um, Especially I, if you're selling something on Reverb, you can actually pull accurate no, it's, info. It's, fun. it's just fun to know, and it's like I like it just for you know shits and giggles. This is funny to me to see this stuff yeah. and how bad websites were and how far we've come. It's um, golly gee, it, yeah. And I think back to '97. That was the same, same year that Heaven's Gate cult, like they all killed themselves in Jeez. California too. Princess yeah. die. Yeah. Candles in the wind that the Elton John was the big hit again, I think, that year. Let's see, is there anything else I interesting in here? That so the, this Fender was. Hendrix experience, that this apparently was a big thing in there because they were really going after people to get them to sign up for whatever this thing was. I guess it was a newsletter that would come out with all the Jimi Hendrix stuff. And the one thing that I thought was kind of cool. Oh, what's this? So you could you can sign up for their their newsletter magazine. So it's a physical magazine. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. So you can print it out, send it in, and here's what else is kind of funny. So they were soliciting for photos or video of Jimi Hendrix that you could submit to them, which I'm sure would save them a lot of money <laughs> and having to pay people Just for their give us your picture. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, that's, I mean, why not? I mean, I mean you if know. you had home video or intimate photos of, or candid photos of Hendrix, I mean, they've got to be worth quite a bit of money if they're uncirculated, never before I seen. I think so. So, um, but back, you know, back then you might you might not know what to do with it or how well, to sell it. So. Yeah, I mean, you, there probably was no other way to get it. How would you find out about the Hendrix no. experience? You got to think. This is '97. There is no reverb. There is no. I don't even know if really eBay was even a thing at that point. So, oh, I don't think so. Yeah, but um, free Johnny Lang CD <laughs> if you want that. But you know what? The most important thing is uh, no, this. eBay was ninety five. Oh, ninety five. So it was still, still early. What's funny is uh, Fender World looks best if viewed through Netscape two point colored glasses. Wait, what does that mean? They're just saying. You can. This website is best viewed with Netscape. But, but what's the colored glasses part mean? Is that just, just they're joke? just being funny. funny? Okay. Yeah. Because I, I was like, oh, were there actual Netscape glasses? <laughs> no, I don't think so. But this was a top five percent website of all websites. So I mean, like, so that you have to think then they actually spent a lot of time and effort to make it look like because you had to code yeah. everything. Magellan is a Magellan five star website. So they hired some web designers to really put this together I guess. for him. Spent some serious it's just, capital. It's sort of funny to go back and look at what the internet was at this time. You know, so. People will go back and look at the fact that we are all looking at videos of people looking at websites too one day, maybe. It will be funny. And they're like, wow. So, I mean, I think this is a cool thing to look into, to kind of go back in time. Um, we're going to continue to do these. So put in the comment section what ones you want to see. Like, what era. I would say... You know, 97 is probably the beginnings of a lot of these for the for the archive. Right. And what so, companies, too. Yeah, what companies. Um, if you want to see PRS, um, if you want to see Gibson. I've already kind of peeked into some of the Gibson stuff. Some very cool things that Gibson was up to. There were some cool things that I wish they would kind of do today. Yeah, I mean, some of the things they are bringing back. So, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll see sort of how things are going uh, back in the late 90s, Y2K. So let us uh, know in the comments what ones you want to see. We'll... I remember because I used to live near um, Union Park in New York right around the turn of the, the millennium. And they had this big countdown clock on the Virgin Megastore that was counting down towards the zero. And everyone was like, yeah, Y2K is going to happen. And it just nothing happened. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing happened. happened. I was a senior, senior in high school. Yeah, yeah, I was... Emily Miller's house. We were all there. I was eight. I was five years old. Yeah. Oh, at, at Emily Miller's house, it was awkward. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were watching really bad movies. I don't know what happened. Um, but no, I mean, I, that's probably a good, good little first fresher. Thing. Yeah. I hope you so, enjoyed that. It's weird. I know we're having a little fun here. This is some weird moment for us. Let us know what you think. Wayback Archive. Go check it out. 
You could even go way back archive Casino Guitars website oh, if you really want to be, yeah. That's disturbing. Yeah. It's gotten better. Let's see where it all began. Oh, don't even tell me. Good night. Good evening. Good day. Click the bell, hit subscribe. Sign on. See ya.